Hi, welcome to NASA Launchpad. I'm your host, Justin Tully. We've talked about the design process here at NASA Launchpad before. You know, where you identify a problem, brainstorm solutions, then select a design which you build, test, and refine, sometimes over and over until you find what you need. Oh yeah, and you have to share the solution with others. One of the key pieces of that process is the sharing. Why? Simple. So you consider the work that others have done before to solve a similar problem. Maybe someone else's work can be applied to your situation, and you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. I'm sure you've heard Sir Isaac Newton's quote, If I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. No one recognized that concept better than Max Faget when he designed the blunt-shaped capsule used for the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo missions. Faget based his designs on the early aerodynamics work of Harvey Allen. The result? Well, see for yourself. Today, most of us take the idea of manned spaceflight for granted. But during the late 50s and early 60s, the idea of man traveling in space was an exciting challenge to be conquered. In the early days of the space program, engineers knew very little about the effects of space travel and re-entry into the atmosphere. But one man, Dr. Max Faget, came up with a revolutionary design that helped launch America into the space age. During the late 50s, engineers debated over which type of craft should be used to launch man into space. The debate centered on whether the U.S. should continue refining the X-series of rocket planes or to build an entirely new type of craft to achieve orbital flight. While this debate was occurring in the U.S., the Russian Space Agency successfully launched Sputnik, the first satellite into space, in October of 1957. The space race had begun, and the U.S. was already far behind. After hearing about the successful flight of Sputnik, Engineers began to design and test new spacecraft at a frenetic pace. The U.S. had some expertise in building long-range ballistic missiles, but was having difficulty designing a vehicle to carry man into space and bring him back safely. One day while playing pinochle after lunch with a co-worker, engineer Max Faget began sketching out a design for a new spacecraft on his napkin. This new craft had a blunt-shaped bottom and was designed to fit on top of a ballistic missile. With his idea in hand, Faget began a series of crude experiments to test his design, one of which included tossing a paper plate out of a window to test the basic aerodynamic principles of the design. Faget's idea for a blunt-shaped craft was ill-received by many aerodynamicists of the time. Researchers thought the most effective way to orbit and return to Earth would be in a low-drag aerodynamic vehicle. Although this vehicle had merit, Faget knew that an aerodynamic aircraft would create excessive amounts of heat, causing major structural and safety problems for the astronauts. Well, everybody that had to do anything with flying through the air would always try and keep the drag down as much as they could. So, so the original versions of ballistic missile reentry vehicles were all highly streamlined, and, and uh, they had everybody working on ways to keep them cool. Faget alternatively proposed that his new blunt body design should be used instead. He reasoned that his design would create a huge shock wave around the spacecraft, moving the heat away and keeping the craft cooler upon re-entry. Faget began to push his idea as the best one to get the job done quickly and safely. That particular shape, it wasn't really an invention. That, that, that's just a piece of nature. There isn't any shape that will have less heating than a mercury shape, it, it, it's it. After a series of wind tunnel tests, his blood-shaped vehicle was proven to be the most successful design. Paget's space capsule design was adopted in the late 50s. Astronaut Alan Shepard became the first person to fly in the Mercury spacecraft designed with a blunt shape. This design proved to be so successful that a variant of this craft was also used in both the Gemini and Apollo space programs. Faget's foresight and tenacity overcame many technical challenges and helped launch America into the space age. Today, as we plan to return to the moon, Mars, and beyond, NASA is building 21st century exploration vehicles. But those designs will use the scientific knowledge and technology skills already learned from nearly a century of aeronautics research. The result? Orion looks very much like the Apollo capsule. The difference? 40 years of experience, exploration, and design will help a whole new generation of pioneers leave footprints in other world soil. That's all we've got this episode. Thanks for watching. I'm Justin Tully, and we'll catch you next time on NASA Launchpad.